Yeah, so just, you know, first of all, just want to say how much of a joy this team has been to work with. And first two official days of practice, it's not like it used to be in the old days when I was playing where you had your whole summer to basically play pickup. You had no access to the coaches. And then once October 15th hit, there was such an excitement in the air to start practice. And you got two weeks, and then you were playing games. Now, with the summer access that we have, especially when you have a foreign trip like we did to Spain, we feel like we're, we've got a lot of things in. And then you have the four hours that we had in the fall access to the players. So even though this is only the second official day, we feel that we've been around this group, obviously, for a long time and spent a lot of quality time with them and had a really uh, good trip with them in Spain, which I know I've talked about in the past. Uh, you know, one thing that I've really been impressed with this group is a competitive spirit. Every day you know exactly what you're going to get from these guys. There's a physicality with this group. Uh, there's a lot of experience with this group. We have nine players on our roster that have four years or more experience. We have the oldest team in the Big Ten, and that matters. These guys are battle-tested. Uh, a lot of them have played postseason basketball. Um, we have two players in Rink Mast and Josiah Alec that were both second in their respective leagues in rebounding. Uh, Jawan Gary, back healthy again this year, is one of the elite offensive rebounders in the country. Uh, Bryce Williams, with his size at 6'8", uh, gives us great versatility all over the, uh, all over the floor. And then getting Kese back. Uh, it, it, we've been very careful with Kese from a load management standpoint. He's had a very grueling summer. So we've taken it very slow with Kese. Yesterday was his first full contact practice since he returned from the World Cup. As soon as he finished with the pre-draft process, when he put his name in the draft, he had to work out with the Pacers. He went straight to Japan and started working with his national team. And he survived three rounds of cuts and was one of five players in the NCAA that played for his national team and the only one that averaged double figures. And really, the two wins that were important to help them qualify for the Olympics, Kese was a huge part of, of those wins, and especially in the clincher, where he had 22 points, 16 of those in the first half, I think in eight minutes. So you know, it's, it's great to have him back on the floor. Uh, but again, this group, we've got three teams of five right now that are playing, and they're all equal. And that's fun. We've got depth, uh, more depth than any team, certainly, that we've had since we've been at Nebraska. And we've got the size and versatility to play a lot of different combinations on the floor. We can play some smaller groups. We can play big. Uh, we can play gigantic if we really want to, which I've never been huge on. But this team has some skill across the board. And when you look at the percentages of our three-point shooting with the guys that we're going to have on the floor in our rotation this year, a uh, majority of them have been 35-plus percent. Uh, three-point shooters. So uh, just really excited about this group. And it, again, when, when you have a team that you know what you're going to get, it just makes our job so much easier. And it makes our job a lot more enjoyable when you have a group on the floor that shows up every time uh, they step on it. You mentioned the physicality and the competitive spirit with this group. I know you had the returning nucleus that went through all that last year. But then when you were recruiting through the portal and the guys you brought in, how much of an emphasis was that and then also staying old? Having that veteran presence with the group? Yeah, I think one thing that, and I've heard from a lot of people over the summer just how much fun they had watching our group last year. And I know I talked about that early in the preseason that this was a team I thought that our fan base could really get behind to be proud of, whether you win or lose. They were going to be a team that left everything out on the floor. And I talked to our staff about getting the same makeup of player. And, you know, the good thing is not only do we get those kind of guys, but we also got a lot of players in the portal, five of them that fit how we play. We got two freshmen and Eli Rice, who's had a great summer, and Matar Jop, who I think you saw if you were in the gym this morning, you know, we haven't had that type of athlete. Jawan Gary went up, had a clear path to the rim today, and Matar went up and caught it with two hands. So we have rim protection with Matar. Now he's got a long ways to go uh, from a skill set, but he does things you just flat out can't teach on the basketball floor. So uh, when we talk to our staff, we just want to continue with the type of player that we had in our program last year. And I know we've talked about this. You know, we, had we stayed healthy last year, I think we would have had a great chance to be a NCAA tournament team uh, because we had that grit. We had a defensive mindset and identity. And we wanted to get that same uh, group of guys in here this year. And so far, 
uh, that's exactly what I've seen with more size and with more versatility uh, on the floor. So yeah, it, it, to answer your question, Robin, 100%. We wanted to identify the guys that fit with what this fan base can rally behind, get behind, and be proud of when they when they when they uh, when they step on the floor. Uh, Blaze is uh, right now. He's we're being very cautious with him. He's got two more weeks. He's going to get another scan on his ankle. So he's the only guy right now not in the floor. Ramel had a, a, a situation in practice yesterday, and we're being cautious with him as well. That's why he was not on the floor today. But Blaze, yeah, he's been the one guy that uh, that is still healing from the surgery that he had in the off season, and uh, still has some soreness in that ankle. So we're just being careful. We're, we're uh, shutting him down to quiet the foot down. And we'll have more info in a couple of weeks when we get the when we get the next scan. Is it concerning or um, expected? Well, it's I think a little bit of both, Amy. Um, you know, he and Josiah had their surgeries around the same time, and Josiah got cleared. He had his first full contact day of practice yesterday as well, and um, you know, so they've had. But everybody heals differently, so you know it is a little disappointing not to have him out there, but not totally unexpected just based on how different guys heal. And they had a very similar type injury and surgery. So, uh, you know, Joe has obviously healed very quickly and his rehab has gone according to plan, uh, where Blaze has taken a little bit longer. And, you know, hopefully we get him back out there soon because he was a huge part of some of the late season success until he got hurt in that Maryland game at the end of the year. Fred, what's kind of the, the goal for this season? I mean, do you think that this year is the year where making the tournament is the standard? I mean, you guys have yeah, I mean, I think we've got the makeup of a team that certainly can play in the postseason. And our goal is to get better every day. Uh, the old coach cliche, uh, you know, it's it's about going out there and, and improving as a team. The togetherness, the, you know, sticking together through adversity, that's what I think will define this team. We show a lot of grit out there on the floor. Uh, but when things have gotten a little difficult in the few practices that we've had, you know, we got to stay together. You can't have five guys going off in different directions. And that was a big message uh, that we talked to our team about after practice today. And I think it's the type of guys that are going to do that. It's, it's another team, I think, that saw how important the chemistry that we built, the culture that we built that took us through the tough times and, and battled us through the adversity that we had, losing two starters in January to continue to fight and battle and play probably our best basketball at the end of the season. So this team has a lot of those same players back, uh, over 50% of our scoring, I believe, from last year's team, and then some key additions with the same type of makeup uh, with our guys. So it's, uh, again, it's been a fun, fun team to coach in the early stages and you know, just need to continue to get better. Yeah, we're just we're continuing to work through the NCAA side of things, Robin, and and that's really all I can say about it at this point. We don't have a time frame on on uh, on when we will know, but Aaron's continuing to practice. Uh, I've really enjoyed being around him. He's a wonderful kid, and he's continuing to work hard and just go out there and worry about what he can control. So you know, as far as a time frame, we just don't have anything uh, with that right now. But we're continuing to monitor, obviously, on a daily basis. Yeah, Boogie, uh, you know, it's tough. I, we did a Zoom call with Boogie in Barcelona. I think it was one in the morning over there. And we were very fortunate to get a guy of a player of his caliber that late in the game. He has got an unbelievable feel for the game. His ability to pass, uh, come to a jump stop, see the skip uh, pass. He's throwing the skip in transition, which is a, a big emphasis for our team. Uh, but that's the thing I've been most impressed with. He's been over a 35% three-point shooter. but his feel IQ playmaking has been the thing that I've been most impressed with. Uh, and also he's shown great leadership. This is his sixth year in college basketball following the Derek Walker plan. So uh, he's just uh, continues every day, I think, to get a little more comfortable in the system. Uh, but, you know, we run a read and react type offense. It's a spread offense with the I don't want our guys being robots. I want them being basketball players. And Boogie feel, uh, uh, factors huge into that type of system because he has a tremendous basketball IQ. Let's take a few lists uh, for a second. Other programs in, in a similar situation would just let him hit the door. Why is it important to you to support him? Yeah, you know, and, and we've, we've talked with the administration about this. And, uh, you know, Aaron's got two years of eligibility. and. Again, he's he's been a, a absolute joy to be around and and uh, and really fun to coach. 
and we're still gathering information, Amy. I think that's a big part of it. This, you know, thing is not over as far as, you know, what the penalty will end up being or, you know, what the final outcome is going to be. So we're going to continue to support him. Uh, he's been a great resource for some of our younger players. He's been in the league. He's been a starter in this league, and, uh, and he's been really good for our younger guys. So we're going to continue to support him throughout this process, and uh, hopefully we'll continue to get information as the, as the process plays out. Yep. Yeah, it, it is. It, it's again, it, it's a positionless system. It, it's a spread offense. It's uh, it's it's very much uh, how a lot of NBA teams are playing right now with the read and react and trying to find the right mismatch on the floor and recognize. Uh, you know, they tell me I've I've been asked this question a lot on the court when we're teaching. Where do I go on this play? And I say I don't know. What did the defense do? Okay, did they jump out? Did they give you a lane to the basket? If they did, take it. Uh, if you set the flare and they 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 uh, fell off, ghost out of it and come off for the handoff. So there's just it's really read and react, and that's what we're trying to f teach right now is how to play the game. It's not so much you know we're running this play to get the ball to this guy. It's get the ball to the top, get into a split type game, and now figure it out based on what the defense is doing. And we're making progress every day with that. But this isn't just you run here, you run here, you run here, and this is what's going to happen. It's what what's the defense going to do? And then we need to take advantage, draw two to the ball, get the right spacing, make the simple play. We're still uh, you know, figuring that out. We had 20 assists in our practice yesterday, which I loved, but we had 20 turnovers. It's just way too many. And we've got enough weapons out there where we need to make simple plays and make the right play, and then hopefully force a long closeout and continue to you know, get the dominoes falling and eventually get a great look on the floor. And our guys are they're, they're getting better, making progress, but we still got room to grow. With this what? roster, is playing faster and I guess that new kind of offense, that's the goal, right? Yeah, I mean, it's not a new offense. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's what we've been trying to do. But, you know, we, we were slower last year and we were more methodical. So I do think this group is built, Mike, to play faster and get the ball out quickly and get the ball up the floor and throw ahead and attack or get into our offense from that standpoint. You know, we had a great shot practice yesterday. We skipped it through it to the corner in case he had a wide open look. And you don't have to run a play when you get a shot like that. And, you know, it is a team that we can take advantage, I think, of some speed because we've got experience as well. And now it's recognizing, is the defense back? Do you now make the next play, get the ball shifted, and get the defense moving side to side? Uh, but, yes, to answer your question, I do think it's a group that can play with, with good pace uh, because I trust that they'll make good decisions. Exactly. Yes, correct. Yeah, I, I'm proud of Jawan. He has, he was very diligent in his rehab, and uh, to get him back on the floor in Spain was very important. It was a big part of the process of getting him the confidence to go, know he can go out there and bang around on that shoulder and be okay. It, it's a big part of anybody with a surgery. And you know, when I got my heart, my chest split open, I remember taking that first hit. And I said, you know what, I'm going to be okay. And that's part of it. So Juwan being able to play in Spain against great physicality, against uh, European pros, uh, was a great first step in getting him past what he went through last year. And, you know, the other thing that it did, it forced him to get a lot of shots. It was the left shoulder that he hurt, and he really worked on his form. He's shooting the ball great right now. Hopefully he continues on with that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm proud of Jawan for how much work he put into it, and it's great to see him back out in the court again. He just does so many things for our team. What strides did you see Jamarcus make last season? What are your expectations for him? Really yeah, Jamarcus, you know, to, he's one of the guys that really took advantage of the injuries that we had, and, and that's always been a message to our players is when opportunity presents itself, take advantage of it. Jamarcus was one of the guys that – certainly did that, being thrust into a starting role, really after being in and out of the rotation in the first half of the season. Uh, he's going to play with the ball in his hands a lot more this season. He's going to be playing the lead guard, playing the point, and now it's about shifting because he didn't play a lot of point in high school. He played with a great player in Simeon Wilcher at Roselle Catholic, so playing off the ball and being a shooter scorer was more what his mentality was. So now the shift in mindset of – you know, being the lead guy, making the right play, still being aggressive because he's a great shooter. 
Uh, but yeah, he's uh, Jamarcus is a two-way player. That's what we love about him. You always know you're going to get a great effort defensively. He can guard multiple positions, and uh, you know now the shift of playing the the point. Uh, is a thing that we're really working with him. He was great in um, in Spain in that role, being picked up, played against pressure. Uh, we've got Rink Mast who can bring the ball up the floor. You got Josiah who I think can initiate offense. Bryce has shown uh, the ability in that role. Uh, Boogie certainly can. Sam played point in high school, so there's a lot of guys on the floor that can initiate. But we're asking a lot of Jamarcus right now, and he's handled it beautifully. You see my social media video? I think the old man's got better moves. Yeah. Let me tell you a little bit about that. So that was for the Infinity Coaches Challenge. And I flew to Detroit, and we were in the Ford Theater, and it was me, Jamie Dixon, and Fran McCaffrey. And they brought a choreographer in, and they put me in this velour suit. Now, if you know velour, it doesn't breathe very well. So I go in this choreography for four hours. Those moves just didn't happen. <laughs> so I'm in this room for four hours, and Fran and Jamie Dixon are in the other room drinking coffee and eating donuts while I'm choreographing. And then I went out, and it t that wasn't the first take, by the way. Sam's was the first take. So, yeah, he got his rhythm from his mother. <laughs> Yeah, really, that's a great question because those guys, you know, I'll, I'll forever be grateful to them for what they did for our program, really to shift the narrative of this program, you know, certainly from since, uh, since I've been here. And, you know, the guys that are back, I think, saw how important the chemistry that they built in the offseason was. And that's what this group has done. And the new guys that have come in, you know, we've got this culture established and now they have to adhere uh, you know, to the standards that have been set by this group. Uh, you know, the new guys that came in, I would throw every single one of those guys in the mix as far as being a very good culture uh, person. And, you know, the guys coming back, C.J. Wilcher has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he is shooting the ball at an incredible rate, and he's been the most talkative guy on the floor. Uh, Rink is a guy that has been a great communicator. Kase, uh is getting him back on the floor just raises the level of everybody because he's always out there yelling, yelling. Sometimes you don't understand it, but he's yelling at the top of his lungs all the time in practice. Matar, same thing. He's out there uh, because he sees the guys in front of him doing it. And when you got older players, veterans, leaders uh, that set the tone on a daily basis, that makes our job so much easier. So from a culture standpoint, I feel really good about this group, similar to what last year's group provided. Uh, for us, and it's fun to see. It's fun to see Sam going up 28 in his first game. It's great to see Derek out there having a great first game. Emmanuel still going through his rehab process, but the kid's going to have a, a, a hell of a career, and uh, and, and going to play this game for a long time. And you know that's what it's all about: is setting the tone for the younger guys, building the right habits, and uh, you know pass on to the next generation. Obviously, uh, everyone's different, but broadly speaking, what you know the freshmen coming in, what is the learning curve? You know, what are the big challenges? Of yeah, it's it's a huge learning curve, uh, Wilson. They you know they come in here, <clears throat> they uh, from an, there's a lot of growing pains, especially early in the process. Uh, you know we get on those guys pretty good, but then the older guys pick them back up. And uh, you know Eli Rice is a kid that has an unlimited amount of potential, and it's going to take him some time to get there. And we have to be patient with him. But the good thing is he's learning from a lot of guys that have experienced the same growing pains that he's going through right now uh you know matar again he does a lot of really unique interesting things on the basketball court uh, but he's got a long ways to go with his development and that's our job is to develop him and get him better uh, every day and you can see strides every time he steps on the floor so those young guys they're going to be i think they're going to be great ones when it's all said and done is it going to happen right away i don't know yet that'll be determined over the next 40 days before we uh, step on the floor for our first contest uh, but they're, they're showing huge signs of growth. And the way we structure our practices, uh, now that we have the 20 hours, is we go in the morning, and then they'll come back in the afternoon to get the individual skill work uh, you know, to really help accelerate that development, whether it's offensively, defensively, just really getting them caught up on both ends of the ball. Uh, but we got two good ones as, as freshmen, and, and um, yeah, they got, they got very bright futures in a Husker uniform. Yeah, if you've seen his sister play volleyball, he attacks the 
basket the exact same way that she uh, that she attacks the net. So he's just one of those guys uh, that every possession he is flying around. When he makes a mistake, it's an effort mistake, and those are mistakes you can live with. He's shooting the ball. I know he didn't shoot it well last year, but when you look at what he did at UMKC, over 35% both those years, uh, you know, he spent a lot of time, his workouts were shooting workouts when he was rehabbing with the ankle and just going through skill five on O type things. But, you know, now that we get him out on the floor and there's a competitive element to our practices, you just see the edge that he plays with. And uh, he just flies around, he hits guys, he doesn't care, he's talking, he's spitting, he's drooling you know I just I just love the kid he's uh he's one of those guys man him and Rink when they're out there on the floor together and maybe Juwan with those guys we're gonna have as physical a team as anybody in our league uh I think we've taken seven seven charges not quite blaze was by far our leader so we're a little lower <laughs> this year but uh Kale Sam have done a great job taking some Jamarcus actually took one this year um who else, Luca? Matar. Matar got one. Yep. How excited were you to see how guys respond to Kase to get him as part of the operation and also the fun? I mean, watch them watch him like in his range and as they realize they'll shoot it anywhere. Yeah, you know, just to. S I think a big part of his success last year was playing on his national team. And you, you can have a little bit of. Sometimes those guys spend so much energy, expend so much energy in the summer that they're burnt out by the time that you get them on the floor here. Casey never has a bad day. You see the joy that he goes out there and plays with. Like our guys loved watching him. Um, I know a couple of them wake up at six in the morning when his World Cup games are going on to watch him play. And you know when you have a guy that has that much fun playing the game, he brings that energy to practice every day. And it's not just what you see on the court in games. You know That's how he approaches every day in practice. It's how he approaches a shooting contest when he goes out there in his individual skill uh, set. When we shoot our Husker 100 drill, if he doesn't get over 90, he's disappointed, um, you know, out of the 100 game speed shots that he takes. So, you know, it's just uh, it's fun to have him back, and our, our guys just absolutely love playing with him. And he'll take shots where some people will think, God, how can you shoot? And then it goes in. And, you know, but he's, he has that ability. So you got to live with some of those shots that he takes. And, you know, he was, I think, after – uh, the last six weeks of the season, he was third in the league in scoring behind the player of the year in Zach Eady and behind the first-team All-American in Trace Jackson Davis. So, you know, you got to live with some of those things that he does when he has them on the floor. But our guys need to find him, and, and he needs to hunt those shots. Players that maybe didn't grow up playing basketball, yeah. but but you got them when they were 14, 15, 16 years old, and they developed. When did you see that begin? Oh, I don't know if that's a new thing, Sam. Um, it's uh, for Matar. He has not been playing long, but you see the physical tools that he has, and how if you develop him the right way, just how you can mold him into a basketball player. I mean, he's an, as athletic. I've never. I don't know if I've ever had a guy like him that looks down on the rim when he dunks the ball, but he. That's who he is as an athlete. He's got a 7'3 wingspan and measured almost 6'10. And he's just, uh, we were very lucky. And, that, you know, Ernie Ziegler, uh, my assistant coach that saw him in Atlanta at the NBA Academy, uh, hit me up the first day and said, there's a really intriguing kid out here. And then he watched second day. He said, shoot, coach, I think we might need to offer this guy. And then the third day, he said, this kid's a no-brainer. And we got in there early, and he was the, uh, his first visit. And we were very fortunate to get that done. Uh, because we needed that depth on our front line. And you saw that last year when we lost Blaze at the end of the year because of the size and physicality in this league. So, um, you know, he's going to have a chance to play as a true freshman. There's no doubt about that. Uh, as, you know, still a very young, evolving type player. But, you know, I just, again, he plays with a passion. Uh, we ran a sprint. We ran a down back, down back. You got to make it in 22 seconds. He beat everybody by a half a court. Um, so he just he brings a intangible that we certainly haven't had uh, since I've been here. When, when you're looking at players that maybe haven't been playing this the game long, is athleticism and wingspan the first two things, or are there other things? That's an important part of it. You don't want to get a five eight kid that's never played before. So you know, having a having a big guy that can go out there and just give you a because. Whether he's played the game or not, I can tell you one thing. He's going to be able to protect the rim. He's going to be able to rebound. He's going to be able to catch a lob and dunk it. He's going to be able to run to the rim and draw guys in, maybe open up a three for Casey or CJ in transition. Um, so, yeah, you, you have to have the physical tools. You see that 
And then, you know, can they, do they have timing? You know, can they, uh, uh, you know, when they catch the ball, can they go up quick and dunk it? So those are the things that we're working on with Matar. Uh, but yeah, from a phys physical standpoint, he certainly checks every box. With the spring, having a big man who can shoot three-pointers well, which you haven't had a ton of recently, how much does that open up just for everyone else, and how does that affect yeah, it opens up everything. And when you have, especially in our system with a trail, when you can get the big away from the basket, that's going to open up so many driving lanes and hopefully create a higher percentage uh, at the rim. You know, Casey, one of the most impressive things he did last year, he was second in our league in two point field goal percentage because he was such a good cutter. Now you get a guy like Rink that can shoot it. Now his guy isn't clogging up the paint. Uh, you know, some teams played Derek, you know, they would back all the way in the middle of the lane and just clog things up. Uh, you know, Derek was obviously very unique and special in a lot of ways, but he wasn't a great floor spacer. And that's what Rink uh, can do, shooting, I think, 36% from the three-point line last year. And he's got a beautiful stroke. So, you know, we feel good about our system fitting who Rink is as a player uh, because of his skill set of being able to shoot and pass. Anything else for Coach? Thank you, guys. Well, we have